What's up, 10 Scale Squad? We have leveled up. 3D printing has been around since the 80s. It's quickly becoming a multi-billion dollar industry, and there's a good chance that you've seen some 3D printed parts. It started out as prototyping in the early days, but now they're sending 3D printed stuff into space. And today, for whatever reason, uh, we've entered the 3D printing game as well. I asked you guys which 3D printer I should get, and overwhelmingly, you guys told me that I should get the Ender 3 uh, Pro. So that is exactly what I did. I don't know anything about 3D printing. Not uh, nothing. I barely even know PCs. We're gonna chop this thing open and uh, see if we can print something. Big old dicks. Garage.com. Nice. Oh, okay. Well, I can see the comments already. You morons. <laughs> oh, I see a familiar connector there. Yeah. Look at that. I know what that is. So I think we're just, gonna, what's the plan here? We're just going to take out all the bits and pieces and inventory. All right. Well, oh, look at that. They even give you some starter a filament. Bit, a little bit of starter. Screw up. Screw up filament. I think right? that's what that's called. Yeah. What in the world? You gonna do some spackling? Scrape it off the, the deal maybe? I, I guess. I don't know, but we're two fully grown man children. Certainly we can figure out a way to assemble this, right? It's like Lego instructions. Ooh. Nice. I think we'll probably just do the, the time lapse. Here's a spot here for our spool of filament. And um, like I said, I really don't know anything about 3D printers, but I'm assuming you need to have a flat surface and a flat print bed um, to make sure that the, the nozzle doesn't smash into your 3D printer because obviously it doesn't know if this is level or not. It doesn't know where it is mm -hmm. in relation to this. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is get a table, level up the table, level up our print bed, plug it in, and I'm assuming there's some sort of calibration you have to do, and then, uh, I don't know, start printing stuff. It should be that easy. I hope. What do you think of the instructions? Easy to follow? Was it difficult to assemble? I could use a little bit more, but overall not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. All right, let's get a table and get this thing set up, plug it in and see what happens. Well, we got our filament installed. It's all the way through the extruder and down to the nozzle. We powered it up. Uh, we're gonna put the default, you know, pre-made STL on there, which I believe is a dog. And uh, I think we ought to see if it does stuff. Is there a 110, 220 volt switch on that power supply? We had it set to 230 volt. Whoa! <laughs> that looks way better, huh? Hey, look at that. It's doing stuff. So it says the bed is heating. Awesome. I think we're doing something right so far. Oh, well, that's not good. Oh, it still thinks that other thing is on there. Pause print. Right? I mean, obviously, if you're watching this, there's a good chance you uh, are probably thinking these dummies. Uh, but you know, this is our first time. We know nothing about these uh, other than there's a lot of stuff that we see that we want to print. So we're just giving you what our experience is. A couple little foibles here and there, but it looks like we're just about ready to start printing. And there it goes. So it's the next day, we let the print run overnight and I just came in to look at it and look what happened. Oh no, look at our pig. 
Look what happened. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, this isn't really telling me much of anything, at least not that I know of. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that did not go well. So, I'm not sure what the heck happened with that. Again, you know, we had to leave and kind of let it print and do its thing, but, uh... One week later. Well, that was kind of foolish, wasn't it? In retrospect, we really should have taken some time and done a little bit more research to find out about things like bed leveling and adding brims to your 3D prints. So we had a few issues with the prints actually sticking to the print bed, but a few late nights and a lot of research online, and we were able to get some really, really nice benchmarks. So here's the pig that we started with, and this one failed. It actually got pretty far. Uh, I'm actually kind of impressed to see how far this got without any bed leveling or, or anything, really. It didn't stick to the print bed, so it came loose and just shot filament all over. And the same thing with our poor puppy here. It got pretty far, but unfortunately it came loose from the bed and the same thing happened. And then we tried to print Benchy the tugboat. And then we really, really dialed in the bed leveling and we were able to get this. So again, not perfect. There are a few little blemishes on it. Like right there, you can see some blemishing. But overall, not a bad print until it came loose from the bed again. But with a lot of tinkering, we were able to get some benchmarks to print. Here's what the dog should look like with uh, his whole head. And then of course we printed this XYZ cube, another popular benchmark, but we were still having issues with things coming loose from the bed. So after talking to a lot of you guys, you suggested that we should use something to help stick the 3D printed model to the bed. And you guys suggested glue sticks and hairspray. This is just cheap maximum hold hairspray. And it seems to be doing the trick. I mean, what do you think, guys? This has a lot of things that are difficult for a 3D printer to print. The shape of the hole here, the portholes with the ring around them, the arch. It's actually got quite a bit of detail in it. You can see there's even a little steering wheel in there. So a pretty intricate print that takes oh, a couple hours to print. And you can see we still have a little bit of blemishing there, but overall, not bad. And for less than 250 bucks, you can get into 3D printing. And if you're an RC enthusiast or a modeler, chances are you're a tinkerer as well. And we actually had some fun over the last few days pulling some late nights and tinkering with this thing and getting the settings just right to make some really cool prints. And it's actually pretty rewarding to go from something that's just in a box that you assemble, you start up, and you have to measure and get everything just right. And then you can start making stuff, building stuff. Now, obviously these are all pre-made 3D objects, but you can learn to actually make your own 3D models and with a slicing tool, that will convert it into a G-code file that your 3D printer will understand pretty easily. And there is a huge, huge community of people out there that are more than willing to help you along your journey. So we have definitely stepped up our game and this is opening up a huge door full of possibilities for the radio control hobby, the modeling hobby, and I'm really excited to print some stuff. In fact, there's something pretty cool on the printer going right now. So that's gonna do it, guys. What do you think? Do you have a 3D printer? Are you gonna get one? What do you think I should print next? Let me know down below. And if this is your first time checking out the channel, welcome. I like to do scale shenanigans like this all the time. And I've got some pretty cool stuff coming up. You're gonna wanna stick around. All right, guys, until next time.